Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and we're going to understand how to use coroutines and what they are in C Sharp coding. So, firstly, let's actually create a new script because coroutines are absolutely important when you want to deal with waiting and time and space within Unity, and they are, well, widely used. So, let's just call this script2 because why not? So, within Visual Studio, we have to initially create that coroutine. So what I would like a coroutine to do is basically wait for, let's say, 10 seconds, and then we can do something. The reason we can't do that in a normal method here is it, it just doesn't like it, basically. It has to be a coroutine. And the coroutine is always started by I enumerator. And we can call this anything we want, literally anything we want. So let's call it ball code, because we're going to deal with that bouncing ball that we had from the last tutorial. And then open close bracket, so you got your parentheses and open curly bracket and hit return. So initially it will underline in red. Reason being is because it's expecting to kind of wait at some point or yield as it were. So why don't we do that first off? Yield and then we want to return a new and then we tell it what we want to do. So wait for seconds and then in brackets the amount of time we want to wait for. So let's say 10 seconds. Close bracket semicolon. So after 10 seconds what do we want to do? Because this does work in the same way as a method. We just have more options available to us. For example, if, if we take this line of code here, put it in void start, it wouldn't actually work. See, already you can see it doesn't like that. So that method wouldn't work. So that's why we do need the I enumerator. So after, let's say, 10 seconds, we want that ball to just disappear. So what we can do is let's set it as a variable. And variables work the same way. In uh, coroutines, you can still call a variable. So public game object and let's have this called the ball semicolon so much like we would in a, me in a normal method the ball dot set active false semicolon so let's say after another i don't know three seconds the ball reappears so we can copy and paste that line of code again and let's change it to three seconds and let's have the ball dot set active and let's say true obviously because we want it back so using coroutines gives you the ability to kind of create a sequence of events so here we're creating that sequence of where we're waiting 10 seconds turning it off waiting three turning it back on so how do we get this coroutine to start because if we attach this to our scene now this coroutine won't even begin so I'm going to get rid of void update and do this in void start. If you're just instantly calling a coroutine, you would do it in void start, not void update. Reason being is because you wouldn't want this coroutine to be called every single frame. You want it to be called just once, and that's it. And we can do it by typing start coroutine, and in brackets, type the name of it. So ball code in this case open close bracket close bracket again and semicolon and save the script so here all we're doing is when the game starts we're instantly calling this coroutine and running this sequence so let's attach that to a game object script 2 let's attach it onto there and we just need to attach it here sphere over there so now when we press play it should play as normal for 10 seconds, and then it will turn itself off. So let's just see the sequence in action. There we go. Three seconds, comes back on. And there we go. So that has created the sequence of events. And I guess we could do that even more because we could go a little bit further into this coroutine and type while. And let's say, um, bounces ball is less than 10 then we do the following 
So we can do that. Now it's under our bounces ball there because we haven't set it. So that means public int bounces ball semicolon. And what we can do in this is this will loop inside the coroutine until it meets this condition. So what we can do is come here and then we say yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets let's have 0.5 f f because it's a float remember semicolon and then after half a second we could use that line of code turn it off then we can copy that line of code and then this one here to turn it back on and then obviously the final thing to do within something like a while loop is to increase this because we want this to happen 10 times so we would have bounces ball plus equals one semicolon so what that would do is add one to whatever the value of bounces ball is and save so this coroutine is going to run through it quite nicely now so let's go back press play and let's see this entire routine play out so we should have this for uh, 10 seconds and then it should turn off or set inactive as it were and there we go and now on for three seconds and there we go you can see there we go so it's doing that whole 10 thing right there 9 10 and there we go that coroutine has stopped and it carries on as normal so guys that is how you can use routine or coroutines i should say within unity Remember, they are important for when you want to control something like time. It's not just wait for seconds that you can do. You can do a lot of other things as well. But whenever you're dealing with waiting, you would need to use a coroutine. And remember, starting the coroutine is done as simply as that. So guys, I hope that helps. And if you want to know any more, please leave a comment below. Don't forget, click the subscribe button. Click the bell icon as well. You can stay up to date with all the content on this channel because there is hundreds of tutorials for you to learn from. Guys, thank you very much for watching.